Hi everyone, it's Dr. Goel here and you're listening to another episode of Peak Human Labs podcast. And today I want to talk about hair loss, hair growth, and uh, just giving, taking you through the science and what are the treatments out there that are scientifically proven to help with that. So first of all, loss of hair can be caused by a number of reasons. The, f the primary one that most of us are aware of is called androgenic alopecia, AGA. Uh, also known as male pattern baldness, uh, but it does happen in females as well. Other causes uh, that you should be aware of could be loss of hair due to trauma, so repetitive pulling of hair can cause uh, you know, permanent hair loss. And also you can have infections such as fungal infections or bacterial infections that can damage the hair follicle and cause permanent hair loss as well. <coughs> The other one that you should probably, you've probably seen here and there is uh, hair loss caused by the immune system. Uh, this autoimmune uh, cause of hair loss is called alopecia, which just means hair loss, areata. And it's usually, usually a self-limiting uh, hair loss, which is described by circles of, uh, patches of circles of hair uh, being lost. And it happens usually very quickly, within a, a few weeks or a few days even. And it can be extremely distressing um, and you know this is a type of uh, illness that Jada uh, Smith, Will Smith's wife, suffers from. And uh, you know hair loss in general, uh, even though most a lot of men complain of it, it's women who suffer from hair loss. Uh, it's extremely distressing for them. Um, and uh, I, I deal with a number of patients in my practice who uh, complain of uh, hair loss in our women. So, but let's today talk about uh, androgenic alopecia. Like I said. Uh, it means uh, hair loss caused by androgens and of course in men it's much more common but it does occur in women as well because they also produce androgens as well. So what we think is that the um, androgenic alopecia is caused primarily by the, um, the follicle uh, being exposed to androgens and specifically some, uh, a hormone called DHT. DHT is, is what testosterone could break down into when it's exposed to an enzyme called 5-alpha redu reductase. And this 5-alpha reductase converts testosterone to DHT in your scalp. And that DHT goes towards the hair follicle and makes that hair follicle in effect smaller and smaller and eventually that hair follicle dies out. Um, so they've they've proven this by basically showing that uh, men who, ha who are balding have higher levels of DHT and 5-alpha re reductase in on their scalp. So that's that's the biochemical basis for why it occurs, and, and generally it occurs in a very uh, you know patterns. That's why it's called male pattern baldness. You know, crowns are just receding, and then uh, and um, and generally one loses it on the top of their scalp completely their hair and the remaining part is left just around the sides. The, what's important to understand is that there is a, uh, a hair cycle. Just so you can understand what that is, just I'm just pulling this video up a little. I'll be showing you this little image so you can have a look at it while I'm describing it. But basically there's th uh, three different phases and so the hair follicles go in this phase. Uh, the antigen phase, the antigen phase is the growing phase. And so normally this phase can last a number of years. But as the follicles being exposed to the, um, to the DHT, that antigen phase gets shorter and shorter. And eventually, uh, you know, the hair is, is shrinking and then it doesn't have time to really grow. So just the, uh, before the, uh, as the phase is, because the phase is so short, the hair follicle doesn't get a chance to grow. And then basically what happens, then there's a, a kind of like a, uh, a, f a phase called the catagen phase where the hair stops growing and it's there for a few weeks where it just stops growing and the hair starts to detach from the follicle. And then there's the telogen phase where uh, the hair has fallen out, but the follicle is still alive. It's just having a rest and it prepares for a new cycle and then a new hair starts to grow. So if you would think about it, it only makes sense that we want uh, whatever treatments to um, increase the antigen phase so that way the hair has more time to grow and become stronger. 
and also push hair out of the catagen phase so that we can kickstart those hairs to move into growing phase. So that's generally what the treatments normally do, whether it is you want to do this to you know, keep whatever hair you have, or you're post-transplant and you want to keep the hair that you just had transplanted. Uh, those are the, that's the strategy. And so all of these treatments I'm going to describe all, do all of those, th do those things. So just think about it. We want to basically protect that hair follicle. So first thing are these medications called 5-alpha reductase blockers or DHT blockers. And um, the most famous ones are finasteride and deuteracide. So finasteride is also known as Propecia. It's a daily medication. Uh, it's been approved for uh, male pattern baldness and uh, it's quite effective. Just, it, there's a chance of some uh, side effects because DHT is a hormone that you know, does have, perform other functions in your body. Uh, it, it is responsible for the male secondary sex characteristics. Um, so some people uh, do you know, complain of some, some symptoms that it's possible. Uh, there may be a change in sex drive, it's possible. Uh, you may have a decrease in, in ejaculation volume, that's possible as well. Um, sometimes it's, it's difficult to say exactly if these symptoms are related to the medication, but uh, you know, some people do feel that there are some side effects from these medications. So one should be careful and find the lowest dose that works for you if you're going to take those medications. Deuteracide is even a more powerful 5-alpha reductase blocker, uh, but again, more chance for side effects uh, when, when you're using that medication. Uh, potentially, it might just be a once a week dose for a medication like that uh, because it is much more effective at blocking the uh, conversion from testosterone to DHT. The other thing that you might be seeing in, in you know, when you're looking at uh, treatments for hair rejuvenation is the use of uh, low level light therapy, also red light uh, therapy. And there's pretty good evidence um, on the use of uh, these light therapy for. You know, basically bringing back the health of that hair, hair follicle. Again, all of these things, there's a certain kind of like aging of the hair follicle that's happening. It's kind of like generally just happening. And so all of these treatments are just trying to uh, do the exact same thing, which is bring more health, blood flow, nutrients to the hair follicle. So low level light therapy uh, or red light therapy is bringing energy to the hair follicle and also and in effect bringing more blood flow. So once, um, so that's how that works. Again, it might just help in slowing down. It may not necessarily grow, but uh, there are some good studies and I'll put that link in, in, the, in the show notes for you to have a look at the research of low level, uh, low level light therapy. The one that most of you are familiar with and you see this uh, at the pharmacy is the, is the use of minoxidil. Also, the trade name is Rogaine a topical solution that most people are putting on their scalp. Uh, the problem with this therapy is that it's kind of messy. Nobody likes to put this uh, thing on their uh, scalp. It needs to be done at least once a day. Um, and it gives, you know, it, maybe it doesn't even, it, it may not work so well because it's been put on topically, but from my experience, um, oral minoxidil works extremely well. Uh, the studies look really good at it, and even just, again, from my uh, experience of using with patients, it seems to be working much better than topical was and side effects are minimal. So uh, this is the, uh, one of the treatments I'm most excited about these days. Um, another treatment that people are talking about a lot is the use of PRP, platelet-rich plasma. And pla platelet-rich plasma is basically taking your, uh, your plasma, platelet-rich plasma, from your own blood and having it injected into your scalp. And again, what that does is that our blood contains a number of growth factors uh, that are just present in our blood and by doing this procedure we can use those growth factors which are in your blood to stimulate the hair follicle and again bring blood flow to those hair follicles. Um, sometimes, so that normally is done, you know, a session of three treatments every month apart or six sessions. Some people are responders, some people are not responders, but if it works for you it, it's, it's quite a successful treatment. And obviously, in all of these treatments, the more yo the younger you are, the more hair you have, the better you're going to have your, these results. So it's always better to do these treatments as a preventative rather than waiting for your hair to already be gone 
and then expecting to get a full head of hair. That's very difficult unless we're going to go down the transplant route. With the PRP, there are ways that you know people are using things like exosomes, which uh, I did mention in a previous podcast about that, that they are the messenger uh, signal signaling molecules that our stem cells release. And again, those are now being available for topical use and uh, potentially they'll be used for injectable as well to be mixed with the PRP uh, into the scalp. So that's, that's another thing that's possible. And then there are peptides, a whole new area of medicine. These are, again, peptides are basically small proteins. And these proteins, again, perform all types of functions in the body. So it's, it's a, grab, a grab bag term, doesn't really mean very much peptides. But there are two peptides which are, um, are used for hair st uh, growth stimulation. Uh, GHK copper uh, primarily increases collagen, helps with hair growth. And uh, PTD, uh, DBM, uh, both are available on our website, pcuman.ca. And uh, both have been shown to help with, again, stimulating that hair follicle. Uh, thymosin beta uh, is also another uh, peptide that is being used as well for hair uh, follicle stimulation. Well, I hope that really helped and you got some understanding of the science of hair loss and hair growth and what is backed by evidence of what works and what doesn't work. And uh, I feel free to send me some comments. Uh, if you like what you're listening to, subscribe to us on YouTube. We're also going to on uh, iTunes for podcasts as well. And I look forward to hearing from you. Take care.